Yesterday I was asked a question about a 200 TDI head and using an MLS gasket. So what? Well, stick around. When you look on LR Workshop's site, it says that the old composite gasket has been replaced by these um, multi-layer shim gaskets for the 300 TDI and the 200 TDI. Now there's a word of warning, we've covered this before, but a chap wrote to me about this and he, he sort of picked up on what the problem was. Uh, although they have the same part number originally, they're not the same when it comes to a composite gasket, uh, to a multi-layer shim gasket. And that is to do with this here. This is the oil passage. Now you can see it's it's offset a little bit and it's like that because it's a reducer. Um, it's like a restrictor because you don't want all your engine oil going up to your rocker boxes because that will leak. It only needs a little bit. It only needs a little bit of oil. So that's what they do. They overlap the, the shim to make it smaller. But notice here, if we can see, ah there you can see it there. You see where it's raised here. Perhaps you can see it even better there. Yeah, you can see where it's raised here. And that means when it compresses that forms a gasket and on these quality type of gaskets the black finish is a gasket material you don't need to put anything else on these so what's the big deal well well again let's step back in time and have a look at a 200 TDI head this is the only one I've got left it's a uh, it's a good head it's got a tiny tiny hair line crack between two of the valves here but it's perfectly flat and we tested it up to 130 psi no leaks, just needs a seat cutting, but it's on the shelf. It doesn't seem to be much of a demand for them. Well, maybe there is, I don't know. But when we look at the head in detail, here, let's zoom in. There. You can see it's not just a drilling, it's a slot. And that goes all the way through to the rocker shaft, you know, the pedestals. And of course, when you put this on here, it's the same pattern. But there is a bit of a problem. Because if I was to keep that in line and just move it back a bit, you can see that, you can probably see kind of careful, clearly here, when it gets too early, <laughs> that the raised part isn't covering the whole of the hole. So it can lead to oil leaks. This is what I'm trying to get at. It can lead to oil leaks. I'm not going to guarantee it is. But can we fix it? Can we make it into like a 300 TDI head without welding? Well, I propose we use JB Weld. Just JB Weld it up. There's, there's only oil pressure in it. And this stuff is extremely good for fixing heads, believe it or not. Because when we've had corrosion in a cylinder head through like water corrosion, I've actually fixed them with this before in the past and they've all gone on their merry way when they never came back and especially around these water jackets here I've seen them all eaten away and then they start to, to leak JB Weld, sand it down, job done so that's what we're going to do here now the problem being is if you want to drill it out this is a stock standard drill I don't know what size it is uh, 732s because we haven't got any metric stuff here but that seems to fit quite snugly down there but the problem is it's too short it needs a big long drill coming from the other side so how are we going to counteract that well cotton wool bud and tape what are we going to do when we when we got the jb weld in or or the start of it what we're going to do is put the cotton wool bud in thus see and then fill this full of JB weld and then we're going to scrape it over with a little applicator whatever you come like that to force JB weld into that gap and that being sort of flat a little sand down shouldn't be detrimental to the head and that should shift the hole from being here to being there hopefully so let's give it a go. We've got nothing to lose. Um, 
we can always hook it out again uh, if, if needs be. And the reason why I'm using this is because if we want to drill it out, we can cut this, which is usually a little hollow tube, cut this and progressively drill it out till this has disappeared. Brilliant. I don't, I don't know how I think these things up. Anyway, let's get it filled up. But first of all, we're going to rough it up with a die grinder so it's really got some bite into there. Here goes. So all we're going to do is just sort of rough that cap. Thus, and then get some brake cleaner. So in the go. Brake cleaner. All right, you got that. That was easy, wasn't it? <coughs> now we're going to mix equal parts of JB Weld. Now you don't need much. Don't empty all the tubes. Uh, you know. <laughs> Great big mountain and you're throwing it all away. We only need a little bit. So we don't need to put much on this back edge. That's why we're going to put that in there and we're going to try and force it in. But this is kind of uh, expensive, but it's good and it lasts you a long time. So we only want a little bit. And remember you're mixing half and half, 50-50. So don't sort of mix too much. And again, if there's any air pockets in there, you can always come back and do it again, but we just want to make it flat. I haven't done this before, so let's... Now, we're getting there now. <coughs> I can see it squidging out the sides here. Now, in order to minimise sanding, which is why we're using a metal spatula, an old credit card will do just as well. Get as much off as you can. Why? <coughs> because it's a bugger to sand. It really is a bugger to sand. It's metal, naturally. So we clean up our spatula, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to leave it. And we're going to leave it for 24 hours. Yep. Right, this is the next day. And I think I might have made a bit of a mistake here. Should that hole be here? Well, we don't know. I'm thinking it. I'm thinking that's the way. I think I put it in the wrong place. Um, right, so I think I've got the hole here in the wrong place, that's why there's a slot in it. So I'm going to put some black paint on that raised portion where the hole is. And then I'm going to put this on and we'll, then we'll see where the hole is. I thought about this last night and I thought, oh sugar, I put it in the wrong place. But it doesn't matter because we can always, always dig it out. So that's where the hole is. So that's why they need the slot. It used to come out, the hole comes out at a kind of a sharp angle. Sort of like that. And they've put this little trough in here to, to pick up the hole on the original casting in the block. Lord knows why. But now I've bent a piece of copper pipe, a bit of a uh, clutch hose type, quarter inch, and I want to put that into there, like that. We don't have to worry about that too. Right. Now if I put that into here, and hold it in place with JB Weld, I did I have it before? Like like that look. Yeah, like that look. And then if I cut this, fill that with JB Weld, and then cut it flush, it should work. So this is the third day on it after I've the uh, epoxy set. It's a little bit low, but that's not too bad. The copper pipe that I put in 
is still not far enough over this way. That's a disappointment. You can see where I put paint on the raised portion and I lined it up in the gasket and it's very close to the edge. It only wants a few more millimetres over this way. But it's not in the right place, is it? And the thing is, I haven't got a 300, 300 TDI head to compare it to. Uh, or a block, I've got a 200 TDI block, I've got nothing. So, I'm going to say that it's not advisable to put these multi-layer shims on. Perhaps people have done, maybe they got away with it, I don't know. Question is, what could be a solution? An O-ring, maybe? Pfft, I don't think so. I don't think so. You see how preciously close it is to the edge. Um, I don't know. It wants this. It wants this whole blocking off here and moving over this way a bit. Is it worth it? Answers on the postcard or in the comments below.